Hi, welcome to Unity Spiritual Center of Lansing for our weekly spiritual message. We are in a series called The Trance of Scarcity as we come together virtually to just open our hearts and our minds to that deeper understanding of our of all of our nature, of our wholeness. We're going to set the tone today with some music uh, that we've sung together as a congregation, uh, Aria Don's song, The World of Abundance. Feel free to sing along at home or to move with the music or just enjoy. I, I am so grateful for this life I have to Well, that's a great truth to get started on this morning. It is a world of abundance with a life overflowing, filled with love, but we are so often caught in this trance of scarcity. We've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now. And all of us universally need a, feel to be, need a feeling of belonging, but all too often we feel like we're outside of the circle, that somehow we just got left behind, if you will. And last week we talked about our stories that we tell ourselves while we're not in the circle and our stoma, which is our body, our mind, our emotions, it's the wholeness of us, our one, that 
all too often we think our mind has to control our body just as we think we need to control outer circumstances and understanding that this body this physical vessel that we have is not a taxi for our mind it is one and connected that's why our health is so connected to our thoughts our emotions are so connected to our physical well-being now we know that when things happen we've we've heard the terms fight flight or freeze this is our natural response if we run into that bear in the woods. We either try to fight it, we try to fly, take flight, flee from it, or we just freeze and can't do anything, we're just stuck. But last week we touched on, we do have a fourth choice that we don't talk about too often, and that's to go into the flow. We have a reset button that we can push. We can reset our stories, we could reset our reaction to the outer, whatever is happening. We can step into a state of relaxation instead of constriction when we're so tight trying to protect ourselves from all that's going on. So what we're going to talk about today is the cycle of abundance. And there's that circle that we want to be in, this kind of wonderful place of ease and grace in life. And the outside of that circle is this trance of scarcity that we go into where we got to hurry up or we're doomed or this is our last chance, this is urgent. We just get all panicky and constricted and anxious about everything that's going on. But when we get to that circle, there's a sense where we can be playful and relaxed, where there's a, a greater ease to our life, a, a greater, uh, it's really a simplicity. So it's about allowing ourselves to evolve out of that very primitive state where everything is a fight and a struggle to that place where we might find ease and grace. I want to get another shot of this circle. So here's another way of looking at it. There is six components to the roundness of that circle. And very often when we're in that trance of scarcity, we're doing just the opposite of what it would be like if we were living a life of ease and grace. So starting out, if we are in alignment with the universe, there's an ease and flow, but very often we find ourselves forcing. We don't trust our instincts. We don't trust the way things are going. And we try to force things to make it happening. Instead of being in a state of attracting, what happens is that we become grasping. We have to get ours because there's a mistaken thinking that this is a limited universe. And if we don't get it, there won't be enough to go around. Receiving, that is part of the flow. But very often, because we're feeling outside of that circle, that, that mad illusion, we become numb and we don't respond to the gifts that are being given to us. And of course, gratitude, we know about gratitude with this idea of abundance. But the opposite of gratitude is a sense of arrogance that, um, that somehow um, we keep focused on what's missing instead of being grateful for what we already have, right? And when we keep focusing on what's missing, instead of celebrating what we have, there's really a, a sense of, of arrogance in that, that uh, we're just throwing away that this is not of value, the great gifts we might have. The opposite of generosity would be hoarding, that we can't give anything because it's limited and we won't have enough if we step into the flow and, and let things spread out into the universe so they can come back and bless us again. And then the opposite of giving is stagnation where we actually try to stop the flow. I used to live on a kettle lake. A kettle lake has no inlet or outlet. And what happens is the water gets very stagnant and actually begins to shrink up because you need to be able to give and receive. It needs to have that flow, if you will. Whoop. Uh, okay, stop the share here. Yeah, there's a a line that I can hear from when I was a kid that was on TV, and I bet you know it too. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's, yeah, I hear you all say Superman. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. That's what it is with us when we are making that journey from the trance of scarcity into that circle of abundance. First, we see it as something very small, this bird, and then we realize it's bigger than, than that in our imagination. It's a plane, again, it's mechanical. And then we finally breathe life into it, it's Superman. It's this, super way of being, of being so aligned with the oneness of the universe that there's a great sense of relaxation. We are not alone. The universe is not against us. We are one with the flow. That doesn't mean life isn't messy. 
Circumstances will not change when we're in the flow, but our relationship with them will change. I, I keep going back and thinking about September with Unity here, that morning that we found out that we could not find a path where we could afford to restore our building. And in that moment, it was like this big exhale because we had been trying all different venues, looking under every rock, reaching out wherever we could. But in that moment, something happened that I could just feel it like we let go. It's like we're down on our knees. They often say God works best, we're down on our knees not because of the physical position, but it's that symbolism of finally surrendering, finally letting go of a real definite outcome to, to how we think it should be. We just become relaxed. God does work best when we're on our knees. And you know, as soon as we let go, immediately, immediately the universe stepped in to fill up that gap, to, to show us another way, a way that was better than anything we could have imagined, a way that was filled with ease and grace as we are now in the process of completing this purchase of a new building. Um, Teresa was saying to me that she calls it the country club of love. I, I like that for the Unity Campus, the country club of love. It's like we need to stop clenching at what we think has to be the answer because this is what the story is. And, and I would look at, see this jar, it's sealed. Nothing more can go in there. This is clenched, clenched tight. There is nothing that can come out of it, nothing that can go into it. But what we need to be is that, that vessel. And, and here's a vessel, it's ready to receive. It's, it's kind of messy because life is messy. But if I take this flow of water and pour into it, look at how easily it takes it. It's quite happy to take it, and though it's still a little messy. By the time this talk is over, this water will clear up and it's still ready to receive more because it is in the flow. And it's just as easily if I tip that jar, it would pour out and the jar would not feel badly because it would know it is still a vessel to receive even as it lets go of what it is. So being in the flow is about removing these artificial barriers, like this top on this jar. It's the top on the jar is an artificial barrier. It can easily come off so that it can totally be in the flow. But no, we have this thing condensed and set in a specific way. Okay, here's another way to look at it. We're pretty familiar with our bodies and there's really a, a physiological example for all kinds of abundance. For example, our heart. Our heart never takes a break. Now, what does that tell us? We should never stop loving no matter what's happening. The heart does not take a break. It is always working. And our muscles, you know, as we use them, we get stronger. As we lift weights, our, our muscles grow. But if we overuse them, it gets a little sore because, again, we're forcing it, stretching it a little too much. And if we underuse them, it atrophies because we haven't made that demand on them, just as we need to make that ask of the universe of setting that intention. And then we get to our breath. It's so often used as an example for the flow. And, you know, if we just become conscious of our breath, it is so easy. It just goes in and out in and out. But if we were to constrict our breath and only allow ourselves to breathe in just a little and to breathe out just a little, breathe in just a little, breathe out just a little, doesn't feel good. It's not pleasant. This is constricted. It's not very efficient. It doesn't help the body. It makes us tired and exhausted. And even, you know, physiologically, if you want to include the mind in that, think what happens when you just stop everything that you have to do, stop your task and do something just for fun. Whether it be going out for a walk, painting a picture, whatever it is that you like to do for fun. And anything we've been struggling about prior to that, as soon as we allow our mind to relax into the fun of the moment, the awareness of the moment, isn't it amazing how all of a sudden a solution we may have been looking for pops into our mind. A new idea pops into our mind. We have just taken the top off the container so we are ready to receive that next new great idea. I was taking a class this afternoon on technology and while I was taking it all of a sudden the whole line out for Advent season just popped into my mind. 
just because I was focusing on something else and what I've been working on prior to that, figuring out what to do for Advent, just there, it was just so simple. It was so obvious. It just totally laid out for me. I think we really need to understand what abundance is of this universe, this, this infinite power, what we call God, spirit, whatever name we want to be using, this infinite wisdom, infinite supply that is unseen but ready to come into manifestation, that it replenishes itself at every opportunity. You know, very often we think of being in the flow as a river, but the mistake in that analogy is that the river only goes one way. It's really more of a circle. It always replenishes itself. If you step, you know, into the river here, you may displace some water, but it just fills right in again as it goes through its cycle. And when I talk about abundance, I really hope you understand that I am talking about abundance with a capital A, an abundance of energy, yeah, money, finances, an abundance in our relationships, that they are rich and fruitful. Our health, there is no greater riches for us than our health. That is our real wealth in this world. An abundance of inspiration, ideas. How about opportunities? An abundance of doors that open for our own self-expression, whatever that might be. I don't think there's anything that can feel quite so good as, as to be able to allow the creative force to move through us, whether it's for something we create or for something we can do to enhance a relationship or just to really flourish in a new opportunity. Some of the, so the first two keys in the circle and the circle of abundance are about aligning and attracting. And, you know, the skill of letting go should be easy so that we can align with the universe instead of aligning, forcing where it is we want to be. But, you know, as I look at us as a community, we had 13 months of struggle. And as we shift to this new process of, of buying our new property, of uh, welcoming this new property into our ministry, we are now called upon changing the way that we do things. And it's, it's kind of like you've had this big battleship or the Titanic going full force ahead. And all of a sudden it's come to a stop and it's got to turn. It takes a little while. It doesn't turn on a dime. We need to learn new skills. So it is in our own individual lives. If we've been really forcing ourselves to, to make things work, and I'm telling you to just take a breath and let go, it won't be immediate. You're going to need to take it a little bit at a time, take it at the speed that you can relax into, that you can feel confident as you're going through this. It's like it's part science and, and part alignment. And it's all about coming together into balance. And for each of us to find that balance, it's like we're this great chef. And we know if we put this and this together, what happens? But we're also looking for some inspiration to go in there. So it's a, a great unfoldment within our processes, within our thinking, within our heart, within our physiology of our body. Einstein was quite renowned for he'd work on a problem, work on it, work on it. And then all of a sudden he would take a break and he would go play piano or violin. And after various amounts of times, all of a sudden he would say, I got it, I got it. It's the same way with us, we do our work and then we let go and have some fun. We allow ourselves to breathe in, to breathe out, to focus and work on it and to let go. And in that letting go, we allow ourselves to float into alignment with the universe, into that vibration of the universe. Alignment is really about finding an effortless ease, just a sense of like settling into the best chair you've ever sat in. It's comfortable and supportive. And you know, it takes practice to get our reassurance and our confidence up. Uh, I remember at a time um, when I early started started with Unity and I was working uh, in the office. And from time to time, the church needs things, needs things. And it seemed like every time we needed something, I lived in a townhouse complex at the time. And on Tuesday was garbage day. And if I went out of my townhouse on Tuesday mornings, invariably, right around the house, somebody has put out for free, whatever it was that we needed. And I think the most astounding manifestation of that was when we really needed an office divider, one of those kind of office wall padded things. And I'll be darned if there wasn't one sitting right outside our door. 
God comes out on garbage day. God comes out every day. It's just a matter of allowing ourselves to be in that ease and alignment. But sometimes, you know, when we get constricted, we just force it that we either force how it's going to happen or the specifics of what is going to happen instead of being able to focus on really what it's going to be like in our beingness, how it's going to make us feel. It's never about the thing. It's always about the beingness that we are as we think about that thing, we think about those circumstances. So that's why it's not always exactly as we might imagine it because that our imagination sometimes can be constricted. The universe may have much greater things in mind than we can conceive of in our, in our own mind, minds. When we're wondering if we're in alignment with the flow, there's a, a friend of mine has this little thing called halt. And if we're about to make a decision and you can't tell if you're in the flow or not, the halt stands for hungry. If you're hungry, if you're angry, if you're lonely or if you're tired, this is not the time to make the decision. We have these Maslow hierarchy of needs. And if we're not being able to breathe easily, if we're not feeling comfortable, chances are we are not open to that inspirational voice. We are not open that divine idea. That's why I'm saying this is an, a degree of growth, just like turning that chip around by degrees, not swinging it around, it would break it in half. Little by little, we find that place where we feel in alignment. And when we are in alignment with the flow, we become this great attractor. We become this great magnet. And, and we know ways to bring ourselves into alignment. We know about meditation or being creative, being painting or dance or Tai Chi or reading some inspirational uh, book that we know those moments when we are closer to being in alignment with the truth of the universe, that ease and grace. Joseph Campbell, if you haven't read Joseph Campbell, he's fascinating. He said, the goal in life is to make your heartbeat match the beat of the universe, to match your nature with nature. The goal in life is to make your heartbeat match the beat of the universe, to match your nature with nature. It's all about finding that confidence within us, that surety that God is always with us, that there is not a time when we are left alone, that we are assured of our needs being met, Remember, we don't attract what we want or what we deserve. It's what we expect. So it's really important that, that we try things in our life to build our confidence into that activity of God within our lives, into that power, into that wisdom, into that incredible compassion and harmony that we already have within us. We just need to find ways to let it out. Meister Eckhart said that when the soul wishes to experience something, she throws an image of the experience before her and enters into her own magic. None of this is ever outside of ourselves. None of this is hocus pocus. If we do the right thing, some power in the universe will bestow something upon us. No, <clears throat> it is about our own internal growth. What we need to do, each of us personally and uniquely ours to do to experience that spiritual growth. Stephen Covey says that abundance mentality springs from internal security, not external rankings. Abundance mentality springs from internal security, not from external rankings. So it's a growth a bit at a time. And there's a great joy as we, as we move each step in our own spiritual journey, moving into this expanded awareness, because there's such a great surety is we build in confidence of recognizing the presence of God within ourselves and with everything around us. W.H. Murray wrote something that is constantly inspiring me and I, I really understand how confidence comes from commitment and commitment comes from deep confidence. And he wrote that until one is committed, there is a hesitancy, a chance to draw back always ineffectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiation and creation, there is one elemental truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, providence moves through. The moment one definitely commits oneself, providence moves too. 
no matter what it is we are looking to grow in our life, the good we are looking to allow to be greater, greater compassion, greater love, greater energy, greater health, greater relationships. And it says all sorts of things occur to help on that that would otherwise have never occurred. A whole stream of events issue from that decision, that decision to commit, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents, meeting and material assistance that no man could have dreamed of would have come his way. Beyond our dreams, as long as we commit in confidence, knowing we belong inside that, that cycle of abundance, that we are in the flow, we get to be part of the flow for ourselves and for each other. It's been said that when everything is possible, nothing is necessary. Right away, knowing that everything is possible, you cannot help but feel more abundant. You cannot help but feel more supportive. You cannot help but feel closer to God itself in your breath, in your ideas, in your very beingness in this moment. So for a spiritual practice for this week, let me just bring up our PowerPoint here again. We are, uh, I'm gonna invite you to, to attend and to adjust, to align and to attract. And I don't think this, this came up on, on, uh, on your screens out there. I may have um, done something uh, technically, technically challenged. Um, yeah, tell me with you just a minute. I will end that and um, let me go back here. Sorry, you know, sometimes technology is still one of my areas to learn a little more ease and grace, if you will. But I'm just going to um, share the slideshow, the current slide. There we go. So this week is a spiritual practice. Take five minutes a day to let it be easy. Five minutes a day to let it be easy, whatever that means for you this week. Whether it be attending, being, being attentive of what's going on and making adjustments so that you're in the flow, or to consciously thinking, am I aligning myself with truth and love and ease? Because in that alignment, we automatically become those great magnets to attract that in which we have confidence. Make that commitment. Let it be easy for five minutes a day. Now we turn to a gratitude celebration. It has been such an amazing time here. We so appreciate everybody who has donated um, to our ministry and just keeps the doors open because we are still open. And of course, we get to share with some great organization, Congress Choice for this third and fourth quarter of 2020, Punks with Lunch, Rise and Sunrise Movement. We're gonna be having some messages from them uh, very shortly. They're doing some videos for us. And now I'd like to take a moment for us to just do a celebration of our own individual prosperity. Just taking a moment to really appreciate all that has flown into a in our life, the good, the joyful, the surprises. As we take a moment in deep appreciation, we just affirm divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. I praise, give thanks and am glad. Now, I'm gonna invite you to imagine that you are stretching out to take the hands of the person next to you. Just allow your energy to move from your hands to the palms out to another being on this planet. So you join together in heart and in mind to choose love, to choose love over and over again. Yes. Peace in my life is growing because choose love love's always present it's what I'm made of
love to all week all day every moment you are invited to watch unity on demand to fit your schedule or binge watch us with all three sections together god bless your week and stay safe